Former Port Authority Marketing Manager Bernadette Stern-Meno is accusing the Port of violating her privacy rights after they released her medical records in adverse action forms against five other Port employees who were also fired alongside her for alleged corruption. It all went down earlier this month when the governor's office announced that there were serious allegations and evidence of impropriety and corruption at the port. Initial notices of adverse action were given to the six employees, but they included in those notices Menno's medical records. Civil Service Commission Director Tony Lamoreno tells PNC News that he had advised the port board's legal counsel to redact Menno's medical records, but in the final notice of adverse action, Lamarana says Menno's medical records were still included. The Civil Service Commission isn't the only one who warned the Port Authority of the negligence. Menno's attorney, Curtis Vandeveld, tells PNC News that he had also warned Port General Manager Joanne Brown, who was in her acting capacity at the time. It was a matter which we brought up with the uh, acting general manager, Joanne Brown, and it's my understanding that those same medical records were released as part of the final notice of adverse action, all, all of which would then take it outside of the uh, possibility of a negligent release and make it an intentional release, mm -hmm. which would subject them to uh, possible penalties uh, of a civil nature and possibly uh, other claims that might be locally filed relative to invasion of her privacy. PNC has also learned what the official reasons were for the termination of the six employees. They are theft or attempted theft of port property or the property of others, disobedience to a constituted authority, attempt to cover up or conceal defective work practices, and falsification of material facts of a statement. Van Develde argues that, at least for his client, the port should have been more specific in listing how she violated port rules and regs. Guam's personnel rules and regulations and law require that the employee must receive detailed and specific notice. But relative to the various causes, there was no analysis of fact and the regulation, but what was attached to it was another 200 and some odd documents, and it was kind of like, here's what the five reasons, and go fish through the rest of these documents and try, and try to figure out what our reasons and justification are. Menno, along with the other five employees, were fired last week after they were accused of signing off on an approval for Menno's workers' compensation request. The governor's chief of staff, Frank Ariola, who reviewed the request, says Menno's $70,000 travel request raised a red flag and triggered an investigation, which resulted in the six employee terminations. But the claim wasn't all for travel. About $7,500 was for travel. The remaining $66,000 was for medical expenses. Vandeveld also says there's no way Menno could have falsified information on her workers' comp. All that documentation was generated by port employees uh, between information that they received from the physician that they hired and uh, was created by people to get internal governmental approval of, uh, of services none of which was submitted by Bernadette, none of which was reviewed and approved by her or signed off by her. Lamarana tells PNC that one of the six affected employees, Francis Ariola, who was a personnel specialist, has already filed an appeal with the CSC.